Journey into Space is a BBC radio science fiction program written by BBC producer Charles Chilton. It was the last UK radio program to attract a bigger evening audience than television. Originally, four series were produced the fourth was a remake of the first, which was translated into 17 languages including Hindustani, Turkish and Dutch and broadcast in countries worldwide including the United States, New Zealand, Australia and the Netherlands. Chilton later wrote three best-selling novels and several comic strip stories based upon the radio series. The first series was created in 1953, soon after Riders of the Range a popular western, also written by Chilton ended its six series on the BBC Light program. Michael Standing, then head of the BBC Variety Department, asked Chilton if he could write a sci-fi program, and Journey to the Moon later known as Operation Luna was the result. Each half-hour episode would usually end with a dramatic cliffhanger, to increase the audience's incentive to tune into the next episode. The original magnetic recordings of the show were erased shortly after broadcast, and for several decades it was believed that no recordings of the show had survived. In 1986, a set of misfiled transcription service discs produced for sale to overseas radio stations was discovered, containing complete copies of the three original series more accurately, the surviving version of the first series is a cut-down remake of the original, produced for the transcription service during the 1950s. This discovery enabled the BBC to begin rebroadcasting the show in the late 1980s, and release copies of the show, first on audio cassette, and more recently on CD and Internet download. Fans of Journey into Space include Colin Pillinger, Kenny Everett, John Major, Stephen Hawking, Miriam Margulis and former Doctor Who producer Philip Hinchcliffe. Topic: The main characters. The four main characters appear in all the original series, as well as the later special episodes. Guy Kingsley Pointer, who played Doc, had worked with Charles Chilton before Journey into Space, and Chilton once commented that Pointer was a very good poetry reader. Chilton also observed that Bruce Beebe was like his character Mitch, and was always blowing his top. David Kossoff asked Chilton if his character the ship's radio operator could be called Lemuel a name he loved, and Chilton shortened the name to Lemmy. Chilton based Lemmy's character on himself, since he had been a radio operator in the RAF. Originally, Chilton had chosen John Glenn to play Jet, but later decided to use Andrew Falls instead, because Chilton's secretary fancied him. David Jacobs's ability to play a wide variety of characters, each with his own distinctive voice, resulted in him playing 22 different characters during the course of Journey into Space. He used to mark up his script using different color pencils, to help him remember what each character was supposed to sound like. In episode 1 of The Red Planet, Jet is interviewed by a group of newspaper reporters, all of whom were played by Jacobs. Light hearted pranks were often played on David Jacobs just before a recording session was about to begin. On one occasion, Andrew Falls poured a jug of water inside his trousers, totally soaking him, and he did the rest of the program in a raincoat. On another occasion, some of the actors smeared mustard on his lip microphone, causing him some difficulties during the recording session. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Original 3 series. Topic: Journey to the Moon, Operation Luna. 
Initially, the first series was simply known as Journey into Space, with the subtitle A Tale of the Future added by the Radio Times, but within the BBC it became known as Journey to the Moon. The series was set in 1965 the year in which Chilton believed humans would first walk on the Moon, and was first broadcast in 1953–1954 on the BBC Light program, which later became BBC Radio 2. The series was originally intended to have 12 episodes one source claims 8 episodes, and 5.1 million people tuned into the first episode, but the first four episodes which took place on Earth did not prove very popular, and the audience soon shrank to fewer than 4 million. But once the rocket set off for the Moon in episode 5, the audience reaction was much more favorable. The series was extended to 18 episodes, and by the time the final episode was broadcast, 8 million people were tuning in. In 1958, Journey to the Moon was re recorded for the BBC Transcription Services, retitled as Operation Lunar, because the original recordings had been erased. The first four episodes of the original series were omitted, and episodes 12 and 13 were merged into a single episode. Today, the only surviving recording from the original 1953 series Journey to the Moon is a five-minute excerpt from the final episode. Folds, Kingsley Pointer, and Derek Geiler were the only actors from Journey to the Moon to reprise their roles in Operation Luna. In addition to the main characters, other characters in Journey to the Moon included Other characters in Operation Luna included Asterisk Alan Keith born Alec Kossoff was the brother of David Kossoff, who played Lemmy. Chilton wrote Episode 8 of Journey to the Moon in response to a challenge from a TV producer, who considered the success of the series to be a fluke. The producer challenged Chilton to write an episode, "...that could not be played equally well on television," and Chilton succeeded. A large proportion of the episode takes place in total darkness. During the episode, Jet reads to the rest of the crew by torchlight from The First Men in the Moon by H. G. Wells, the only work of fiction carried on board the ship. Andrew Falls's adopted uncle, Hector McPherson, was an astronomer, and wrote a book called Practical Astronomy. Chilton bought a copy of the book, which first sparked his interest in astronomy, and later led him to write Journey into Space. In Episode 7 of Journey to the Moon, Jet's childhood flashback features his great uncle Hector, who was based on Hector McPherson. In November 1957, Chilton wrote an episode of the BBC School's radio science series Our Own and Other Worlds, titled, A Trip to the Moon which featured edited material from episodes 5 and 6 of Journey to the Moon the table below indicates the correspondence between the episodes of Journey to the Moon and Operation Luna topic <laughs> the red planet The second series, The Red Planet, followed the adventures of the crew in their first attempt to reach and explore Mars. Several new characters were introduced, the most notable of which were Frank Rogers and James Edward Whittaker, the two original crewmen of Freighter No. 2. Chilton took the name Whittaker from a copy of Whittaker's Almanac, which was sitting on his desk. In addition to the main characters, other characters in the Red Planet included Asterisk married to Bruce Beebe, who played Mitch. The most memorable catchphrase from this series was, Orders must be obeyed without question at all times which was often repeated by many of the conditioned characters, especially Whittaker. Episode 19 of the series rated a 17% audience share, whereas the newsreel broadcast simultaneously on BBC TV had an audience share of 16%. 
This was the last time that a radio show achieved a higher rating than its TV opponent. During the first broadcast of this series, the Radio Times featured Journey into Space on its cover, showing Andrew Falls as Captain Jet Morgan. His spacesuit, which was used by several of the cast members for publicity photos, was a prototype being developed in Britain at the time. During the recording of The Red Planet, Guy Kingsley Pointer was also starring in the Tea House of the August Moon at Her Majesty's Theatre. The British Empire exhibition was referred to throughout the episodes. In the table of episodes below, the numbers marked with hash refer to the numbered freighters of the Mars fleet. The world in peril The third series was a direct continuation of the story begun in The Red Planet, and followed Jet Morgan and his crew's return to Mars in an attempt to avert the impending Martian invasion. In addition to the main characters, other characters in The World in Peril included During the recording of The World in Peril, Alfie Bass was also starring in the review The Punch Bowl at the Duke of York's Theatre. Topic. Critical reaction and legacy Public reaction to the show was mixed. Some comments received by the BBC described the show as, "...a first-class affair", and "...the best serial for ages". After episode 5 of Journey to the Moon was first broadcast, the Daily Express commented, Hats off to Charles Chilton, who has switched from Riders of the Range to Journey into Space with masterly ease. I rate this space travel serial as the most exciting piece of radio material for years. Midway through the original broadcast of The Red Planet, a BBC audience research report indicated that the series was described as thrilling, fascinating, and most entertaining. This is obviously very much a family occasion in many homes, the entire household following the adventures of Jet Morgan and Co., with great interest. However, others commented that the plot often featured scientific inaccuracies, even though Chilton had received technical advice from Flight Lieutenant Roger Burton and Kenneth Gatland of the British Interplanetary Society. One reviewer in the Radio Times issue of 4 February 1955 commented that, Journey into Space was a glorified interstellar horse opera with no coherent plot, which relied on odd musical arrangements to bolster up the stilted conversations of characters with no substance. There were no convincing word pictures of the New World, Jet lacked tact and leader qualities and Lemmy was an improbable space traveler, not to mention electronic engineer. Chilton has admitted that he is not a science fiction writer, astronomer, or scientist, and that his pursuit of astronomical studies is clumsy and very amateurish. He often worked very late to deadline, sometimes not starting to write an episode until two days before recording. Journey into Space remains popular today. Thanks to the discovery of misfiled recordings of the show, which enabled the BBC to begin rebroadcasting the show from the late 1980s onwards. Today it still enjoys a huge fan base, with active websites and keenly received repeats on digital radio channel BBC Radio 4 Extra. Philip Hinchcliffe has acknowledged growing up listening to Journey into Space, citing in particular its cliffhangers, as an influence on his period as producer of the science fiction television series Doctor Who between 1974 and 1977. Music <laughs> 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 
Van Phillips composed and conducted the music for all three series. The music was initially recorded beforehand, and played from acetate discs during the recording sessions. Later, an eight-piece orchestra was actually present in the studio, and played the music live. Phillips liked the sound of the clavioline, and obtained one for use during Journey into Space. He composed music especially for it, and it was "...bolted onto the piano." in the studio. Titles of his compositions include, "...A Picture of the Universe", "...Rocket Away", "...Music for Outer Space", "...The Red Planet", "...Crossing the Plains", and "...Sunrise". In 1955, Decca released a 78 revolutions per minute record of the Journey into Space theme, performed by Frank Weir and his orchestra catalog number F.10435, and sheet music of a piano solo of the theme was also published. In 1978, the recording was included on the 33 and a third revolutions per minute BBC compilation record BBC Space Themes catalog number Ray 324, and in 2005, Vocalin, Dutton Laboratories included it on their digitally remastered compilation CD presenting Frank Weir and his saxophone catalog number CDLK 4266. In Journey to the Moon, Lemmy occasionally provided musical entertainment for the crew on his mouth organ, playing songs such as, "'Knocked M in the Old Kent Road' and "'My Old Dutch'". Excerpts of popular music were often used during the episodes, and sometimes played an important role in the plot. In Episode 8 of Journey to the Moon, an excerpt from Honeymoon on a Rocket Ship", by Hank Snow and the Rainbow Ranch Boys is heard by the crew on the ship's radio, "...when it's night time in Italy", by James Kendys and Lou Brown, was an important part of episodes 7 and 8 of The Red Planet. Other popular music used in The Red Planet included "...Flat Foot Flugie" by Bullet Galliard, Leroy Stewart, and Bud Green, performed by the Benny Goodman Orchestra The theme tune to the Billy Cotton Band show, "'Somebody Stole My Gal' by Lee Wright, "'Friends and Neighbors' by Marvin Scott and Malcolm Lockyer, "'Selection of Hebrew Dancers Part II' by Ambrose and his orchestra, Banjo music by Billy Belth World in Peril featured a rebel song, sung by the conditioned men aboard the Martian asteroids. This song was actually a musical arrangement of The Green Hills of Earth, a poem taken from Robert Heinlein's short story of the same name, performed by the George Mitchell Choir. In the final episode of The World in Peril, Chopin Op. 34, No. 2, Vals Brillante in a minor is heard playing over the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects A variety of sound effects were used in the episodes, and played a major role. In addition to basic sounds, such as feet walking along a corridor or tunnel, more advanced effects were created, such as the mysterious haunting music which is heard over the rocket's radio in many episodes of Operation Luna. The most distinctive effect was the dramatic rocket takeoff, which was played at the beginning of each episode, and whenever necessary during the episodes. This was actually a recording of a jet aircraft at Heathrow Airport. Often, this would be followed by a slowly ascending tone representing the rocket accelerating, which was actually a recording of a thermionic valve played through an echo chamber down at the Physical Research Laboratory at Kingston. 
Other sound effects were created at Battersea Power Station, and the sound made by the televiewer on board Luna was actually a naval ASDIC. The BBC had an echo chamber in the studio, which was greatly utilized during the episodes. Whenever the crew were in contact by radio with Earth Control, or another distant location, the echo chamber would be applied to the voice of the remote character. Various sound effects were also created live in the studio. For example, in episode 8 of Journey to the Moon, the crew hear a mysterious tapping on the outside of the ship. This effect was created by tapping the needle of the gramophone pickup head and playing that through an echo chamber. The operation of the Martian brain when compiling an answer in response to questions was represented by the sound of a 2000 type director, a telephone call routing device used in large city Strauger type telephone exchanges. <laughs> <laughs> Novels Chilton wrote three Journey into Space novels, one for each of the three original series. The first novel, titled Journey into Space, told the story of Journey to the Moon and was the first book that Chilton had written. It was published in hardback by Herbert Jenkins in 1954, followed by The Red Planet in 1956, and The World in Peril in 1960. Later they were published in paperback by Pan in 1958, 1960 and 1962 respectively. On 8 May 2008, BBC Audiobooks released a complete and unabridged audiobook of the first novel, read by William Hope. Topic comic strips In 1956, the Junior Express comic began publishing Journey into Space comic strips, with scripts by Charles Chilton and artwork by Italian artist Ferdinando Tacconi. The first adventure, titled Jet Morgan in Planet of Fear, was a 35-episode sequel to The World in Peril. Tacconi spent some time with Chilton absorbing the atmosphere of the saga, and portrayed in full color the radio actors' likenesses to match the clever dialogue. The story was continued in 1957 in the 32-episode adventure, Shadow Over Britain. In March 1957, Bruce Cornwell took over from Tacconi as artist, and Chilton lost his enthusiasm for the cartoon strip, thereafter it became a contractual chore for him. Terence Patrick took over from Cornwell in April 1957, and by the time the third adventure began The World Next Door, Chilton was no longer writing the scripts. The 1956 Express Weekly Annual contained a short black and white comic strip called Jet Morgan and the Space Pirates, illustrated by Tacconi. The 1957 Annual included a short story called Jet Morgan and the Space Castaway, written by Chilton and illustrated by Cornwall. Discovery of transcription discs The programs were recorded in the studio on 15 IPS magnetic tape, and were later copied onto 33 and a third revolutions per minute 16-inch coarse groove transcription discs for the BBC transcription services except for Journey to the Moon episodes. The master tapes were erased three months after broadcast, in accordance with BBC policy at the time. The transcription discs were sold overseas, and their fate was unknown, so for many years it was believed that all the episodes had been lost forever. However, in 1986, a set of misfiled transcription discs were found by Ted Kendall, a BBC recording engineer, which turned out to be copies of Operation Luna, The Red Planet, and The World in Peril. The BBC no longer possessed a suitable turntable on which to play the discs, but Kendall eventually managed to obtain an EMT-927 turntable. 
To clean the discs, he soaked them in warm water containing fairy liquid, brushed them with a goat's hair brush, and dry them using kitchen towels. Kendall then transferred the recordings to magnetic tape, removing clicks from the sound using a device which he designed and built, called the mouse trap or front end. He removed more severe clicks after the transfer by scraping the oxide off the magnetic tape in appropriate places. The BBC took the opportunity to re broadcast all three series on Radio 2, beginning with Operation Luna in 1989, followed by The Red Planet in 1990 and The World in Peril in 1991. Abridged versions of the three series were also released on audio cassette. In 1998, Kendall digitally remastered the recordings for new abridged releases on audio cassette, and in 2004, the unabridged remastered recordings began to be released on CD and Internet download. The three series have also been broadcast on BBC Radio 7, now known as BBC Radio 4 Extra. <laughs> <laughs> Special episodes <laughs> The Return from Mars In 1981, Radio 4's Saturday Night Theatre slot ran a special science fiction series, featuring stories such as The First Men in the Moon, The Chrysalids, A Fall of Moondust and The Technicolor Time Machine. Charles Chilton was asked to write a new one-off 90-minute episode of Journey into Space for this slot, and the return from Mars was the result. The plot was an approximate continuation from the end of the world in peril. After more than 30 years in space, and missing presumed dead, the crew finally returned to Earth. The episode was broadcast on 7 March 1981. In addition to the main characters, other characters in The Return from Mars included Topic. Frozen in Time This was a new episode based on the original series, with David Jacobs finally taking the role of Jet Morgan who has aged while the rest of his crew were in suspended animation owing to a system's malfunction. Charles Chilton wrote the one-hour play which was set in the year 2013. It was broadcast on Radio 4 on Saturday, 12 April 2008. This was released by BBC Audio in January 2009. ISBN 978-1-4084-0104-0 Music by David Chilton Producer, Director Nicholas Russell Pavia Topic: The Host. A further new episode based on the original series by Chilton, written by Julian Simpson, starred Toby Stevens as Jet Morgan. Another one-hour play. It was set in the year 2079. Broadcast as the Saturday play on Radio 4 on Saturday, the 27th of June 2009. Topic. BBC releases on audio cassette and CD Audiobooks Currently, only the first novel has been released as an audiobook. In translation A Dutch language version of the first three series of Journey into Space was broadcast in the Netherlands by the Katholieke Radio Omro in 1955 1955–1958 under the title Sprong in Het Helal.
Leap into the Universe, directed by Leon Povel. Translation was by Eddie Frankinet and the main character roles were played by John de Fries, Jeff Morgan, Adolf Boomister, Louis de Brie, Doc Matthews, Jan Van Ees, Mitch Mitchell, and Jan Borkus, Jimmy Barnett. Director Leon Povel died just a few days after Charles Chilton, on 8 January 2013, 101 years old. After his death his youngest son Winfried Povel started recording the fourth series Return from Mars with professional actors and as a special guest the Dutch astronaut André Kuypers. The recording appeared much longer than the BBC version, 2 hours 11 minutes, so the play was cut into four pieces 30 to 36 minutes and became a mini-series that way. It was broadcast in January 2014 by the Katholieke Radio Omra KRO as well on Radio 5 and repeated those same nights on Radio 1. Other related series Chilton followed Journey into Space with two other radio series, Space Force in 1984 and Space Force II in 1985 which were based on a similar theme. Indeed, Space Force had originally been intended as a new Journey into Space serial, following on from the return from Mars, until relatively late in the day, so its four central characters are clear doubles for the Journey into Space team. In the version that was actually recorded and transmitted, one character Chipper Barnett refers to his grandfather Lemmy. <laughs> <laughs> 